Hello, my name is Kirill Chepishka. I'm a 3D artist. And in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about editing geometry inside of Keyshot 9. As you're working in Fusion, you either forgot or didn't have a chance or, you know, to break down everything the way you wanted it. Or maybe it was impossible or maybe it's not even coming from Fusion 360. But uh, luckily, Keyshot gives us the opportunity to edit the geometry inside of the program. So uh, for this example, I'm just going to quickly create a sphere. So we can transfer that over again using the plugin. And I click the button, so we're just going to switch to Keyshot. It's updating real quick. And we're going to see the sphere pop up in a second. And uh, let's just uh, do a little bit of a cleanup and uh, uh, get ready to work with the scene. Uh, you can see like we have this odd uh, sphere of an, an environment around it. That's because the size is not correct. So we're just going to go to environment, adjust the size. And uh, we need to get rid of that shadow because it's not really useful. Turn off the ground shadows. And you can see this is our sphere. Um, and uh, this is a perfect uh, a model to show you uh, how to edit the geometry. So r as you right click, you can see a couple of options uh, as far as the geometry goes. Uh, if you're importing NURBS, which in our case, uh, Fusion is not importing NURBS. Using the plugin, Fusion is tessellating on the import. And um, in a, I'm going to show you how to have a little bit of more uh, control over that but retessellate uh, as you can see it says prepare uh, fail to prepare nerves that's because there were no nerves transferred uh, all of those uh, bodies in fusion are um, B rep bodies which is a little different so w we're really not going to be worried about that but uh, uh, and you can close the mesh if this was a scan or, you know, if you just uh, needed to close it for some reason. But the sphere is a uh, perfect model to show you editing normals. Because as I click edit normals, you can see that by default it has imported everything accurately and the normals look fine. But if you, uh, if we start playing with a minimum edge angle and let's say give it like a 20 and click calculate vertex normals, it's going to retessellate and maybe even less. Uh, sometimes certain models will import like this and uh, you know all, all of your smooth surfaces will look faceted. So and we can turn this off we don't really need that. Uh, so when your model on the import automatically or through exporting from Fusion and importing back into Keyshot individually if if that if your model looks faceted like this, what you first thing you would need to do is edit normals and uh, uh, probably set it to 32 usually for hard surface, or uh, I think by default it was 45 and we can recalculate. But you can see past a certain threshold, it doesn't matter. Um, so. from this to that uh, but also and and then of course when you're done just click apply uh, but uh, also sometimes even uh, models that look seemingly normal uh, will come in faceted just because we're using that plugin so a little uh, trick to do here is uh, in the root of the browser, uh, you have the and you you click on the uh, name of the model. You click on display detail control, and uh, by default, it's using adaptive. And you can think about that as your tessellation that's going to be transferred to Keyshot. So we just need to say uh, make it fixed and make it a high dis uh, display detail level. It's going to think a little bit about recalculating, click OK, and then uh, send it back 
to Keyshot. So what's going to happen is it's it's going to recalculate everything and uh, slightly update the geometry so that there's no uh, faceted curves or no faceting in smooth transitions. Um, and so uh, that was for editing normals, but let's take a look at the rest of the options. Um, if uh, for some reason, uh, maybe coming in from ZBrush or somewhere else, you merged uh, the bodies together, you can use the split uh, separate objects option. Uh, and you can see if I'm starting to click from the body, it's going to select that. And if I had any separate objects in here merged into one, um, it would allow me to split that. But uh, usually, uh, as you can see, like in Fusion, if it's one body, it's going to be, it's going to come in as one body. So we don't really need that. Um, but it's, it's fairly useful, uh, again, because um, without editing the geometry here, uh, you can only assign one material per body. So the, as I've mentioned before, the point is to have uh, extreme level of control over the details and everything. And sometimes you need um, certain faces to be separate. So uh, we're going to use this next option to turn uh, individual faces into separate bodies to get that level of control. And for that, we're going to use this option called split object surfaces, which is, I use that a lot. You can see it already has the wireframe uh, turned on by default. And um, we're going to be splitting by uh, angle uh, or by polygon. Uh, in my case, I like to do split by angle because uh, when I'm modeling, I'm kind of uh, mindful about the angles and I don't want anything to be uh, too small of an angle because that means I'm, I need to go like super low to separate something off. But uh, let's see. Uh, by default, if I click with a 45 degree, it's telling me that this whole green thing is going to be one body after the split. It's going to give me this thing and those in those insides as separate bodies or I can just click them because uh, what happens is uh, there's a 45 degree or higher separation between this surface and this surface if I headed uh, at polygons I could just click individual polygons and again uh, depends on your tessellation you can have much higher control over this uh, but having it uh, go by angle is pretty useful by default. Um, so let's just say I wanted this whole uh, rounded face to be separate. What I need to do is just drop the splitting angle. And it's a little bit of a fiddle um, to find exactly the right value. As you can see, I can already separate this and that. Um, so I can also type that in as like 25. Um, and uh, the reason it's not splitting this whole circle is because I have this fillet right here and uh, the angle is super low. So I'm going to have a hard time splitting that off. So for example, if I go down to 10 degrees, it's still not splitting, uh, but it starts to give me these uh, artifacts because of the low level of tessellation of the model. Uh, and then if we need to, we can go down to like two degrees and just um, using uh, control, hold down control and keep selecting until you get the result that you want. So sometimes it's the way to go. It really depends on uh, you know on your initial planning in Fusion. Um, this is just a really good extra option, just in case. So, for example, uh, we wanted this separated, which is going to go ahead and click Split Surface. It's going to create a new body, and it's going to put it under uh, in the scene. It's going to put it under a different subfolder, and uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, click Apply. And now when we're assigning the materials, it's going to stay separate. 
Um, if you wanted to, you know, if the level of tessellation is unsatisfactory for you, you could go through additional, uh, like, third-party software to retessellate your model. So for that, uh, of course, Keyshot plugin wouldn't be useful. What you would need to do is um, just save it out as a step file, uh, maybe drop it into uh, Moi 3D uh, and uh, retessellate there, or software of your choice but uh, you know my preferred method is just going back to fusion uh, we're gonna hide this glass for now and I wanted this specific face separate and again I had this uh, fillet that was preventing me from selecting it so this is exactly where uh, assigning inside of Fusion assigning individual materials to faces, uh, I mean assigning f uh, materials to individual faces comes in handy because we're going to click that face, appearance, and just select, oops, do it one more time. Uh, select face and just do it here instead of uh, breaking it down in Keyshot. So, uh, that way we get that extra level of uh, control and we don't need to uh, play with the angles and, and polygons there. Um, so this uh, should be it for uh, editing the geometry and um, in the next one, um, in the next part we're going to talk about creating uh, custom environments and starting with uh, uh, lighting in the scene and then uh, move on to assigning the materials.